you start now right yeah so in the last class uh, i have drawn the fluid aged bed with manometer and all that right plus we also have the delta p graph right these two so now delta p graph i have to still draw this is second item no pressure drop due to solids This is the graph what uh, we have also drawn, and uh, I have given the diagram where uh, how to measure the pressure drop, right? So the total pressure drop, which you measure directly from the manometer, is delta P T equal to delta P S plus delta P D plus walls. Usually walls are neglected, but anyway. we will keep that delta ps equal to delta pt minus delta pd plus delta p w okay the equation numbers you have there ah oh. so this is the first equation right yeah first one this is second equation okay so what we measure is this and uh, before taking the actual uh, delta p measurement with solids without solids you have to measure the pressure drop you know in the picture i don't want to draw it again in the picture before putting the solids you have only walls and <laughs> walls are there <laughs> walls and distributor plate okay you just measure at various velocities what will be the delta p and then correspondingly you subtract for from every pressure okay from every for every flow um uh, flow rate you can subtract these values and then you will get this and when you plot this only the pressure drop after fluidization will be constant otherwise as i mentioned in the last class also it will be there will be slight increase in the pressure drop due to the distributor plate walls will not contribute much so okay but distributor plate will have tremendous pressure drop you know i hope you remember your arrhenius arrhenius equation nah, not arrhenius equation orifice equation orifice equation to measure pressure drop see we have single orifice where you measure the pressure drops okay and convert that into yeah flow rates okay so the same uh, u square also will come here so that's why pressure drop will tremendously increase as the velocity is increasing that we have to subtract that one has to be very clear so once i have this then we have to find out is it i mean is there an equation which we can also derive for finding out the pressure drop due to solids okay is there an equation there is an equation very simple very uh, good equation because weight per unit area is pressure drop and at uh, minimum fluidization velocity the entire bed is supported by the drag force so the drag force and then weight of the solids if you are able to balance you are going to get the equation right so that equation you will check with the experimental data so that equation is uh, at minimum fluidization velocity at umf that means at the point of uh, fluidization you have uh, the drag force exerted by fluid by solids exerted uh, exerted by fluid on solids yeah. 
exerted by fluid on solids, this must be equal to weight of the particles. weight of the particles, which is nothing but you know m, m into g mass into acceleration due to gravity okay? that you just remember. Okay? Yeah. So, now this drag force, how do you measure drag force? Yeah, how do you measure it? What you are telling is calculation. Stokes law will give you calculated value. Right? C d equal to 24 by n r e, okay? not n r i, n r e. NRI is different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Or R E simply. How do you measure? Is there any measurement possible for drag force? How do you measure friction? You have done it no? through pipes. How do you measure friction? Kavya? Always Kavya, first attack. Just now you are coming? Yeah, take rest. Yeah. Shekhar? Yeah. How do you measure? How do you measure? Yeah, velocity change. I changed velocity. What do you measure? Moody's chart. Moody's chart you measure, you read. You don't measure. Measuring is doing experiment, I say. Oh my god. Uh, energy loss. Yeah, but how do you measure energy loss? Right? Total energy minus kinetic energy. How do you measure total energy minus kinetic energy? Measurement I am asking. So we calculate the pressure drop of the water. Where do you calculate? Measure the pressure drop. Yeah, measure the pressure drop, I say. See, this seems to be a very simple question, sir. No, they are not simple questions. I think you do not have any idea at all, you know, how to measure the pressure drop, uh, drag force or friction factor or friction. Because you cannot directly put something there and then measure it, no. It is only indirect measurement which is used, I mean which is measured by pressure. Okay. Even here we do the same thing, drag force. I, I, I think you know we do not uh, really think beyond certain point. I, I do not know what anyway, again if I go there I time will go. Okay. So, the drag force is measured in terms of pressure drop. Okay. So, when I write the equation again of course, in terms of words, this will be pressure drop across the bed. pressure drop across the bed. In fact, I gave you the clue how do you measure friction factor. right? Friction factor all of you would have done the experiments, maybe Savita would have not done okay? and uh, Kalpana, what should I call you Kalpana or uh, Sarojini? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Kalpana would have not done, but all others would have done it. Rachit, you have done it, no? Huh? Seems like. Uh, yeah. Okay, anyway, so pressure drop across the bed and of course, the cross sectional area that will be there and uh, okay. this length I do not know maybe yeah. cross sectional area equal to because drag force no? uh, weight of the bed. Okay. It is nothing but of course, weight of the bed mass into gravity. How do you calculate mass of the bed? Density into volume. Volume of the bed I know. Yeah. And then density. Okay. So, volume of bed and density. and this density is the apparent density, because already you have some other fluid and the solids would have lost some weight, correct no, By, because of the buoyancy. Okay. Into of course, g is there. Okay. So, this is the one, if I write the equation, this will be delta p and cross sectional area is a and uh, volume of the bed is nothing but, well, actually volume of the bed means here only what you are balancing is solids. right? So, volume of the bed means we are talking about I think better write bed means we feel the entire bed. Yeah, solids. 
So, I have some uh, the volume of the bed into 1 minus epsilon of that will be weight of the solids, okay, where epsilon is the void edge. So, that is what. So, that will be uh, if I take uh, I, I, what did I I did not put anything there. No? Okay, let me put that one as H m f, because we are talking about minimum fluidation velocity right? into cross sectional area that is the volume into 1 minus epsilon m f, because everything get minimum fluidation velocity. right? Yeah, This multiplied by density, which is nothing but rho g or rho f to be general for liquid also that is possible and into g it is very simple only. Yeah. So, then we have delta p by h m f is uh, 1 minus epsilon m f rho s or rho f into g. So, this equation uh, if I write this also numbers 3 4, 5, 6. Yeah, this is is called the fluidization equation. Okay. Yeah. So, can I calculate from this the pressure drop? Almost equal to? Yes, you are right. Exactly. So, that is what I thought of asking you, but you yourself asked and then answered. That is right. So, at minimum fluidization velocity, we know that the bed is almost packed. So, that is why except that a little bit of change and some people who would like to take that because there are a lot of errors involved in these measurements, because first of all your solids are not uniformly uh, one size particles, because always you use sieves in reality. right? Sieves will have some in uh, passing through some retaining on. So, you will have always a little bit of distribution. and. Uh, that is the starting point for all the errors in uh, fluidized bed. And 1 minus epsilon also many times we take as packet bed uh, porosity or if there is already measured value available, because some people in the literature some values are available, that epsilon m f you can take. So, that is available. Rho s I know, because solids which I am taking I know, rho f I know, whether I am taking liquid or gas and the densities we know and g we know, we can calculate delta p provided we know the h f. Okay, or uh, HMF. HMF is nothing but again, I know, same thing. When you take that as packed bed uh, porosity, that also will be packed bed height. So, that will be the one. Good. So, you can calculate this in fact every time. So, this will give you an idea. Yeah. So, I told you sometime back, I think it was Anurag who was asking me the pressure drops are uh, in a uh, fluid asia bed may be higher than the packed bed. See, the maximum pressure drop what you get is only this here due to solids. right? But, distributor will have you know always increasing pressure drop as you go with that one, but the same thing is also possible for packet bed. Packet bed also has the distributor plate, right? but there is slight difference between packet bed distributor plate and this distributor plate only in surface in uh, free area. Which one will be more? Which one will be less? Free area for the distributor. See, you have to I mean, you have to support the solids, right? So, you have a perforated plate with holes. Okay? So, for packed bed, we use also, we have to use perforated plate, otherwise, fluid cannot enter. No? Yes? And for fluid edge bed, also, you have to use. Free area, in your opinion, in which bed less free area, in which bed more free area? More free area means more amount of liquid can go through or the fluid can go through. Less free area means only less. Why? Answer is right. Because uh, you always, you anyways have a lot of pressure drop in the bed. You hmm. cannot uh, keep low free area on the plate and add and add another pressure drop uh, in the system. Exactly, not that is the reason. But I think, can you think so something uh, more? It's not that because already bed has pressure drop, so let me reduce the pressure drop here. The same thing we can also do here, right? The same thing we can also do here. But uh, yeah, in packed bed, plug flow will automatically come because of even bed uh, presence because the bed presence will make the profile almost horizontal, the presence of bed itself. Yeah, that is why, that is a good thing. Even th that is why we say for packed bed, when do you get plug flow or in, when do you get turbulence, uh, you know, almost flat velocity profile. What is the Reynolds numbers? I told you already this. Yeah. And whereas, for uh, tubular flow, 
single tube without anything inside. It will be 40,000, 50,000 to get almost flat velocity profile. Okay? So, that is why. Okay? So, that is not a problem, but you know um, what Shaker said is right, you will use more for packed bed, okay? not only to reduce the pressure drop, to allow more and more throughput. But if I use very large free area for uh, fluidization, fluidization itself will not take place. It needs some pressure drop. That means, it needs some jet activity. Through the pores, the fluid should come like jets. Okay? So, that will actually lift the entire bed. For example, you can take cloth, you know filter cloths are there. You can take cloth, fix it and also you can fluidize. You will never get fluidization. You can get mesh what your mother is using you know to make uh, flour and all that what we are also using sieves here so if you put just sieves you will not get fluidization you will get fluidization much much higher velocity okay so that is why actually the design next point is actually the pressure drop due to uh, the perforated plate itself how much pressure drop you allow you should you should allow okay so that is why this uh, this is pressure drop Yes, I have been using yeah, pressure drop due to solids. So, this equation which we have to use for uh, measuring the, uh, I mean for calculating pressure drop and then it is very simple also, yeah, particularly if I have gas phase, this is almost 0 when compared to this solids. So, it is actually delta P s, you know that equation is becomes, even then it is not much complicated. So, one can easily calculate what will be delta P s and normally what we do is, when you are doing this experiment, we also draw this line where it is actual, actually where that line is. Okay? Because I can calculate no delta P s, I can calculate from that. So, delta that delta P s value I just draw there, just for my reference. Right? If this curve shows me something like this, you know, the, this is the pressure drop, this is delta P s, this is u. Let, uh, let me say that I have like this. What do you say about this graph? Is there anything wrong with the fluidized bed? Fluidization? Yeah, that means not fluidization. All the particles are not supported by by the fluid. Only some particles are fluidized some particles are, are not are not fluidizing that is very important point you can find out really you know that, that means the other part will be dead space there is no use of that right and sometimes you may get also some kind of uh, you know like this like this that also may go up even if you plot for example uh, uh, exactly delta ps removing your pressure drop due to distributor plate even then you will get sometimes uh, this may be difficult for you. This may be due to this slightly increasing and in fact, it is not constant, it will be fluctuating up and down that pressure drop that is be because of slugging, because of slugging. So, this may be due to dead space that means, all the particles have not fluidized and this is due to slugging. What happens du during slugging? the entire cross sectional area is occupied by the gas and solids above they are just pushed up right so then the pressure drop may be more there because entire thing is just pushed up right and at generally very narrow cross sectional area right so at that time when the when it goes up and then it uh, all the solids can be at one point if they cannot be supported the slug will break and then entire bed will fall at that time pressure drop will be fluctuating up and down so, these simple things one can see from the graphs and then find out what is the disease for this particular fluidized bed. It is like doctors you know, they will ask you to take uh, some uh, BP test or uh, some, uh, some other test and then they see the results or graphs and then find out whether what disease you have. Similarly, you are also doctors for the um, reactors or any equipment. You can just find out by drawing or by looking at the uh, you know some measurements and then find out whether something wrong with that or it is beautifully fluidizing. So, all these simple things will be there when you just plot this. Okay, good. 
So, the next point is this is fine, uh, this is the equation, this you do not uh, please forget, I think it is very uh, for the people who have gone through fluidization, you should remember this equation. It is not very difficult to remember, it is just weight of the bed okay, supported by the uh, gas. Okay. So, that is this in terms of pressure drop, this is the equation. So, the next point is pressure drop due to perforated plate, how much pressure drop we can uh, give for the plate. right? So, the next point if I write here 2, 3 now, 3 pressure drop due to perforated plate or distributor, perforated plate or distributor. Of course, if you go deeper and deeper, there will be a lot of uh, discussion about the distributor itself, because that is the starting point for any uh, fluidization and also solid particles. So, that is why solid particles have been categorized into the Geldart's A, B, C, D groups. Then at least we will have an idea what kind of fluidization we may expect. And here distributors, various distributors have been used. They use simplest one is perforated plate. Okay. Then they can also use bubble caps. You know bubble caps? Prabhu, bubble cap distributors. Yes, sir. How do they look, look, uh, look like? Sir, I think there is a hole and there is a cap on top of it. So yeah. the fluid comes, it has to open the cap and then it goes through. It won't open the cap. It goes through, it goes through that. Yes. It won't open. You know, the, the cap is permanent, so it will take the tortuous path like this and then again comes out. Why? Why do they require that? More surface, more time to interact with. Not because of that. It is not because of more uh, contact time. More contact time, you can go to packet bites. Think some more. Why do they put that bubble caps? Other one is C plate, right? Even for distillation, C plates they use. Yeah. So why they don't prefer C plates? But they think you know C plates will give you more, much more. Uh, bubble uh, you know interaction because small small sieves no sieve means the perforations are smaller you generate large amount of bubbles vapor flowing through that so you will have more surface area more transfer but still we put sometimes bubble caps anyone i think any idea why do you need more pressure drop there actually we should have less pressure drop there no in distillation columns i am telling Viola, any idea how can you operate? I think, in fact, uh, it, that gives much more pressure drop at high velocities. Huh? How can that avoid flooding? Because when the gas uh, contacts with liquid, it will push the liquid aside. Okay, but when you have bubble cap, how this liquid is coming? I am talking about distillation. How the liquid is coming? How the gas is going? Where is the gas going? Where is the liquid is uh, liquid going? Because liquid has to come down from top plate to the bottom plate. Gas has to go from bottom plate to top plate, yeah, to the down comer. Okay. So, there is always a way through the down comer. So, liquid will come down there. It comes through the down comer. That is not a problem. No? So, it is better mixing between the gas and For that, sieve plate is better. Because sieve plate contains lot of small, small holes. Right. So, when vapor is going through that, it generates large number of small bubbles. Huh? Contact time is to some extent okay. It is not uh, mainly contact time. You heard of dumping, weeping and uh, huh? yes. what is the problem with sieve plates? Weeping is in yeah. To avoid making uh, weeping, to make liquid happy, you know, <laughs> because you should not weep, no. <laughs> you should not weep. So, to make it happy, you put bubble caps. Now, what will happen? Happily, it will go through. The, through the down comers, because you have to provide down comers when you put the bubble cap. Otherwise, if you have sieve plates, the liquid has to come through the same sieves, gas also has to go through the same sieves. So, it's wonderful information is also there on that, because sometimes even instabilities due to interaction between the bubbles and then liquid also may happen. Interaction I have seen, I have not used for distillation for some other column, turbulent bed contactor I have used. And I also used perforated plates, and then when liquid is coming from the top, 
and uh, under some conditions the entire liquid will be moving like this inside the bed my our diameter was 10 inches a slightly bigger column okay it will be now if you imagine this kind of movement in the industry where they have 2 meters diameter okay it will have tremendous pressure the entire column also may be moving this way that way if you are not properly supporting it okay so that is because the interaction between the bubbles to liquid to avoid that for happy smooth flow bubble caps are better or sieve plates with down comers also are there okay but sieve plates with down comers still it's not good because some of the liquid is definitely coming through the sieves you cannot avoid that same problem here why do why we need uh, why some people use distributor uh, with uh, bubble caps is to avoid solids flow here perforations uh, perforated plate is the best one sieve plate is the best one the and sometimes what we do is over the sieve plate we will put mesh very fine mesh so that it won't create any pressure drop but it will not allow solids to fall through when they are falling through it may block even sieves so then you have that uh, uh, you know the, that hole totally not used for the flow then you have the dead space and like that more if you have more dead space it will create you see everything is important you know when you are designing a uh, any equipment okay so that's why the general thumb rule is of course there are many many thumb rules for distributed design i am talking about oh yeah, this is one bubble caps can be used sieve plates can be used and also there is porous distributors which normally we never use for distillation or absorption we don't use because pressure drop will be tremendous okay porous you have seen the porous distributors it's like membranes porous distributor what they do is they take very fine powder and then compress it as a plate they use copper shards okay uh, they can also use lead shards they don't use copper shards are very frequently used alumina ha huh? ah glass you should have seen this i think you would have not uh, noticed it that when you are doing in physical chemistry lab they use for filtration you know sometimes not the filter paper but sometimes they use the glass frit they call that is porous distributor that's what exactly the same thing is used and that frit has given porosity you can ask for 10% 20% 30% that frits i mean what you have seen maybe 1 inch very small one what you have done in the uh, chemistry laboratory okay so that is what what we are, i am telling you that also can be used that is very widely used because we need some kind of pressure drop across the distributor for fluidization that only gives sufficient energy because that will increase the uh, you know the flow rate velocity okay velocity and what we are calling minimum fluidization velocity is the superficial velocity only we are not talking about each and every point what is the velocity in you know, interstitial velocity we are not talking why because we cannot measure that very accurately same thing even with packet bed okay in packet beds we use whether a distillation column or any other uh, use uh, for packet beds when, when you are using packet beds for a certain process we never use interstitial velocity why because across any cross section the pressure the uh, voidage itself varies right so that means somewhere i have slightly more velocity somewhere i have less velocity all this i can never take into consideration for the design even though we take another average average of all this uh, voidage and sometimes we calculate and then to to tell people that this is the actual velocity going through the packet bed is superficial velocity divided by epsilon voidage that will give me the interstitial velocity okay that is only for some kind of you know uh, satisfaction that okay i am uh, i am also able to know what is now the interstitial velocity other than that if you look into many correlations most of the correlations will not give you this epsilon in the correlation the velocity reynolds number they give for packet beds so most of the time they use only superficial velocity because which is easily measurable so that is the reason why superficial velocity cannot be uh, because it's not simply manageable you cannot and that also varies from point to point everywhere in the bed unless you go for what are called uh, uh, structured packings i don't know whether you heard of them or not so random pack what normally we do in industry is random packings just take the solids and then just dump it but there are structured packings where i mean whatever uh, you know like this like this like this also no like like 
this and then the, you put the entire uh, column with that you know maybe 1 meter 1 meter 1 meter and then given diameter maybe 1 meter diameter uh, total maybe 20 meters so for every 1 meter you put one uh, piece and that is connected and you can see very beautiful structure in those packings those in the industrially these structured packings are also available what is the use of structured packing is that i know very clearly what is the surface area i am going to get that's all more clarity a random packing i don't know unless you measure it and every time you change packing every time it changes right so that is the reason why random packings we use okay so the pressure drop due to perforated plate we will take just two plates commonly used one is the uh, yeah the sieve plate perforated plate and the other one is porous plate porous distributor and perforated plate distributor let me write that porous distributor and perforated distributor these two are widely used okay i think there are some thumb rules where the pressure drop should be around 0.2 to 0.4 of delta ps that is the general thumb rule delta ps by delta pb one of the oldest thumb rules is that 0.2 to 0.4 of delta uh, okay that's all oh sorry the other one sorry this is delta pd yeah delta pd by delta ps okay this is what normally uh, the thumb rule so this thumb rule was observed only by experiments so you get good good uh, fluidization when you use this kind of values that means the pressure drop should be 20% of pressure drop due to solids which you can estimate from this you can calculate from this and i don't know whether you have designed uh, anyway uh, who taught you process design equipment design who oh okay yeah as a given the perforated plate uh, design no that is simple one i think i will tell him i think he also yeah, yeah maybe semester is over at least for your juniors you know perforated plate design also is a very very beautiful design okay how do you choose the diameter of the perforation itself how many perforations should be there how many perforations will be there automatically comes once you know the diameter of the perforation and once you know the total free area that fixes but what do you put i think is the pitch whether it triangular pitch or square pitch so what do you prefer generally why better heat transfer where is heat transfer there it's only to allow <laughs> it is only he remembers that for uh, heat exchangers so trying to extend very good nothing wrong <laughs> nothing wrong yeah you can accommodate more number of uh, perforations per unit area that is the reason why we go for that okay so the same thing uh, even for uh, heat exchangers but that is not good because when you for heat exchangers when you talk about cleaning square pitch is better because you will have at least some more place, space in between so where you can clean it and then you know once in a while you have to clean it otherwise it will be fouling and all that so heat exchange may not be there after some time so this is the general thumb rule this is general thumb rule but i want to take you slightly away from this thumb rule also because later people have uh, used again the derivation is there but anyway i have also not seen the derivation but that equation that is used now later which also comes to this after some after uh, under special conditions delta pd by delta ps yeah should be greater than or equal to uh, hf height of the fluidizer bed divided by hmf at minimum fluidization velocity minus 1 yeah this one is 1 minus umf by u naught to the power of n that is the equation by this is 
equation 7, when n is a constant. So, this is the equation they try to use and then uh, for uh, for porous plates, for porous plates n equal to 1 and for perforated plates n equal to 2. Again they do the experiments and then try to find out what is the exponent and all that. Okay. So, this is slightly some theory you know jet velocities and all that they will take and then they will try to derive this. Here of course, one should know what is height h f, h f is the height of the fluid edge bed. There are some equations which relates h m f and h f. Okay. Beautiful relation is for particulate fluidization. Can you imagine that uh, relation? We have h p packet bed and well as, uh, the corresponding porosity is epsilon p. Right. Then it has fluidage to certain level, where of course, packet bed also you can take as m f minimum fluidation velocity right, epsilon m f and at some other high velocities you have h f and epsilon f. What should be the relation between these two? H f by 1 minus h f equal to h m f by 1 minus h f. What will happen to 1 minus uh, epsilon f? It is the volume balance. It is the volume balance, right? So when you have the packet bed, you have this height. When you have um, almost minimum fluidation velocity, yeah, h f into one minus epsilon f equal to h m f into one minus epsilon m f. That is simply volume balance, you know. Height changes. Okay. So that's why one can find out if it is very very good fluidization, particulate fluidization. That means volume is nicely expanding. But in uh, gas solid fluidization that will not work, why the bubbles will destroy the height and you do not know where the bubbles form, where they bubble, uh, break. So, that is why the overall height is not exactly like with this relationship, but in the absence of anything we will also take that particular relation what I have told you, sometimes we will use that. So, of course, this you know, umf by u naught you know, because you calculate umf let us say 1 meter per second, you decide in the beginning itself that I want to use 5 meters per second. That means, 5 times umf, 3 times umf okay? or 20 times umf possible in industry particularly even 20 times uh, umf also is used very easily. In fact, most of the time it is 20 to or, or 10 to 40 times anywhere in between we use industrially. Okay? Because of large amount of solids are there, distributor you cannot perfectly design, even if you design perfectly the distributor gas flow is not uniform through um, all these uh, perforations. So, to somehow you have to fluidize the entire bed. So, that is why I try to use more and more gas. Okay? So, that is the reason why you know that kind of long uh, uh, large values are given that range uh, 10 to 40. Okay? Good. So, this is the one equation and uh, yeah, there is another uh, thumb rule saying that you know if you are very close to EMF you just use only 0.15 those are all details I think which we do not have to discuss that. right? This is what you can just remember for porous plates and perforated plates this is the equation which can be used to calculate delta P d because delta P s you know from this equation and using delta P d if it is a perforated distributor there is a specific way of calculating uh, the perforated holes that you have to decide perforated holes. Okay? Then free area you have to decide normally free area we use here around uh, 10 to 15 percent, 10 to 15 percent, okay? uh, free area good. So, I think this is fine. Yeah, in fact, you get this thumb rule if you take yeah, uh, this one, if you take this uh, ratio h f by h m f as 1.2 1.4 which is used I mean which is the height you know uh, let me explain h f by h m f for many gas solid fluid aged beds will be around 1.2 to 1.4 times L m f not able to follow sorry 
h f by h m f many times in the industry it will be 1.2 to 1.4 times for gas solid beds where you have bubbles and all that it cannot beautifully expand it will expand only when you are going for uh, for the velocities beyond uh, terminal velocities then only starts expanding and comes out of the bed okay so when you have this kind of values you substitute here for perforated plates and you know you will get this thumb rule because originally uh, thumb rules are developed for perforated plates because easiest one is perforated plate so that is the reason and of course people saw that when it is a lot of leak is there two perforated plates they put slightly eccentric it is not the same holes but slightly eccentric then the pressure drop will be tremendous what is the problem there lot of powder will come and then stay in between these two plates okay industry is held to run you know because i think everywhere you will have the problems good okay so that is the one and the next one is yeah nila what is the next point uh this is 3 no ah uh, that is 3 yeah 4 umf minimum fluidation velocity how do you find out minimum fluidation velocity minimum fluidization velocity umf <coughs> nice ideas have come uh, you know when you look at this graph okay i have written here fluidized bed uh, fluidization before that what should i write here prabhu what is that region prabhu let us prabhu can answer this huh? is the packed bed excellent that is the packed bed so at this point what is happening the pressure drop yeah the pressure drop at this point the packed bed pressure drop must be equal to fluidized bed pressure drop what is fluidized bed pressure drop equation 3 what is packed bed pressure drop remember name prabhu ergens equation so at the point of minimum fluidization velocity simply we balance the pressure drop uh, this equation and also ergens equation ergens equation also has delta p by l or lp or hp packed bed here H, hmf equal to hp because at the point of minimum fluidization velocity so simply we balance this and then that and then try, yeah and uh, ergens equation has velocity terms you have two in fact quadratic equation yeah u and u square right so then it is a quadratic equation you solve it and then you will get the minimum fluidization velocity because you are balancing at point of minimum fluidization velocity that we will do quickly and before that no one asked me why this particular height and then falling and uh, slightly above and then almost constant why no one asked me i don't know sir uh, i think the interparticle refraction is uh, what will happen at that point why it is increasing and then again falling right you are on the correct track so when the particles are attached particles are initially and when they uh, so when they break yeah so it needs a little bit of higher energy to break that interparticle forces and once they are broken then it's easy again so the particles will not have you know the, the gas need not have that much energy so that is the reason why it is a little bit falling and then comes down and if you do that uh, if i do the experiment this is i have taken the bed put the solids and then slowly increasing the velocity in this direction from lower value to higher value but i can also do the experiment i can start at the highest value possible right not terminal velocity somewhere here terminal velocity means all the solids will go away right so somewhere here if i start and then slowly decrease i don't see this why obvious the yeah, interparticle uh, that forces are not there because you have already broken them in the beginning itself okay so take it to higher velocities and then do it then you will get almost like this of course there will be slight hysteresis a little bit down okay but anyway i think you know you will get almost horizontal like this 
Yeah. Because it has to lift up the bench. In the beginning. Yeah, that is right. The bump would be. Ah, that is when you are going in the zero to smaller velocities to higher velocities. Okay, that's why. Okay, not lift the bed. For why it is uh, why it has to lift the bed? Because all the particles are coming together. If each particle is individually present, then the gas will exert uh, the drag force on each and every particle. So uniformly it will fluidize. But when you have normally we use fine powders, so it has that surface energy where it will come together and then cling together. So that you have to break before fluidization. So that is the reason why it goes slightly above. right and this kind of very beautiful points you cannot see particularly ah uh, by the way this is generally for gel dot a and gel dot b particles okay if you go to cohesive powders then you cannot exactly find out that uh, nice curve you cannot that's why we don't want to fluidize group c particles cohesive particles but if it is absolutely necessary we have to do it right so then use either vibrations or some people even use uh, not only vibrations you have this uh, uh, sound ultrasound ultrasound also breaks this you know the interparticle forces and one can also do that many many techniques can be used good okay so that's what i thought i will just inform you there huh? Huh? liquid solid uh, depends on what kind of ah uh, not definitely this so much because but still it can have slight peak there also okay yeah for liquid solid also it is possible good so minimum fluidization velocity at the point of fluidization yeah so i think it is unfair maybe to ask you to remember the ergun's equation so i will just draw here at umf delta ps equal to delta p okay this also i can write Per unit length, HMF HP packet bed, yeah, at a minimum fluidization velocity. Okay, where of course we are taking HMF equal to HP at that point. So now I have to write here the Ergun's equation. Uh, okay, here delta P S. That familiar equation is one minus. epsilon mf rho s rho g into g equal to the other equation is 150 1 minus epsilon m square mf epsilon mf cubed mu umf because at at umf we have already balanced this is mu viscosity And phi s by dp whole square. Okay, that whole square comes. And here I have uh, yeah 1.75. Again, I have here one minus epsilon mf by epsilon mf cubed. How you get these cubes and all that? You could have done it, no? In the derivation, Ergun's equation derivation. You get here rho. Uh, okay, I will write here this term. Rho f, yeah, rho f U M F square by phi s d p, where phi s is sphericity. Okay, yeah. So yeah, the, that is the equation. And when you rearrange this, I may give this derivation to you. Okay. when i when i rearrange this what do you what do i get is very nice equation 1.75 by epsilon mf cube phi s r mf square plus 150 1 minus epsilon mf by epsilon mf cube phi s square into r emf equal to archimedes number oh i have to give the number 7 this is 
this is 9, this is 10, okay, where I have to write where R m f equal to d p u m f rho by mu rho f by mu and Archimedes is Nazima ready g d p cubed rho f rho s minus rho f huh? uh, by mu square. Okay. So, this is the Reynolds number, uh, sorry, Reynolds number and Archimedes number. Good. I think I will remove this. Yeah, I think this is uh, first given by a person called Wen and Yu. I will also write here Wen and Yu. That is why it is called Wen and Yu equation. I think 1948 or so. Yeah, reference. Yeah, okay. I do not have here, but sometime like that only. Yeah. So, that is the one and they were very smart people you know, they were all excellent engineers at that time. They want to use the equation as simple as possible. Okay? So, that is why what they did was, they found out epsilon m f and phi s square for large number of particles. Okay? Sand, sand uh, you know if you uh, take river sand, it will be different. It will take, uh, if you take sea sand, it will be different. Which one be, will be more round? River sand or sea sand? River sand, because the river is continuously flowing, but there it is only back and forth action okay? and also limited okay, most of the time, but there river in Vijayawada may bring sand to Nellore. Okay? So, during that it is only flowing like this no? at the bottom of the river or Ganga for example, you take we do not know. The, the sand from Himalayas may be coming to Bay of Bengal particles. So, that is why it is more round. So, uh, like that they have taken various particles alumina, copper, uh, uh, you know not silver, silver is costly, zinc and many, many materials and they have formulated this group as 1 by phi s epsilon m f cubed is approximately 14 and the other group that is 1 minus epsilon 1 minus epsilon m f divided by uh, what is that yeah phi s square and epsilon m f cubed is approximately yeah 11. So, then this constant will become how much this constant will become how much this will become yeah 24.5 and this becomes 1650 correct huh? yeah so now that is the quadratic equation of which you can easily solve now this is a constant 24.5 multiplied by rmf square using this huh? using these two right and 150 into 11 that is 1650. Okay. So, then if you solve that, the equation what you get for minimum fluidization velocity is R e m f equal to thirty-three point seven whole square plus point not four not eight Archimedes number this whole thing under square root into 33.7. This is called Venn and U equation, even now very widely used. Venn and U equation, very widely used for small particles. Okay very widely used for small particles. And uh, you know the delta x people, where you know they want to still see whether this is equation correct or can you modify a little bit delta x research, normally what we do, okay? finding out a little bit of uh, plus side, negative side and all that. What they did was, 
that they take this as k 1 constant, this as k 2 another constant and then solve the differential equation in terms of uh, you know k 1 and k 2 right in terms of k 1 and k 2. What you get here is that uh, yeah okay. I mean what I am trying to tell is that this k 1 and k 2 will be the uh, okay uh, let me write the corresponding differential equation in terms of k 1 k 2 k 1 r m f square plus k 2 r m f minus a r equal to 0 uh, number number is this is 11 ok. So, this is 12 good. So, if they solve that what they get is r m f equal to yeah square root of k 2 by 2 k 1 whole square plus Archimedes by k 1 ok this one minus k 2 by 2 k 1 uh, capital. So, this is equation number 3 and uh, no, 13, where now what they did was they took all the data that is available for minimum foundation velocities, because they know Archimedes number right and then take this ratios k 1 k 2 you know to fix this 1 by k 1 and k 2 by k 1. So, they try to fit the data using this ratio one ratio is hmm, here I have yeah one ratio is k 2 by 2 k 1 other ratio is 1 by k 1 that is this and anyway this is 2 uh, ok yeah. So, yeah, yeah over yeah. So, now you know this they try to fix the data like this we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 uh, correlations, 7 correlations. So, all these 7 correlations I think you know the popular correlations this is the first one when and you for generally small particles. There is another one called chi tester correlation, chi tester correlation this is in 1984 if you actually the chi tester is the PhD student where he has his work is only to find out minimum foundation velocity in the uh, thesis I think he is from uh, France. So, for large particles his correlation seems to be better large particles I have not mentioned what is large what is small normally around 100 microns if you have uh, 200, 400, less than 500 microns, this seems to be the better one, Venn equation. Above that, chi, te, chi tester equation seems to be better. Okay? So, with that I think uh, minimum fluidization velocity is over, then I think I have to do tomorrow the remaining uh, parameters. Okay? Mm -hmm.